Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload, as you can tell by the title of this video, is going to be a video uh, discussing whether or not a hot July indicates a cold winter. Now this has been brought up, uh, you know, I've wondered about this myself. I've wondered before uh, whether or not this, uh, does this actually correlate? Is there any evidence that shows this? Now there's many people that have their own answers with this. Uh, some people believe in other answers. I'll just show you what I got and uh, I don't care if you believe it or not. Um, it's, uh, it's just there to show you what I found and uh, just what I found doesn't mean that uh, it's, the, you know, the case closed. It's just, um, I guess, uh, what made the most sense to me. And uh, let's let's get into this video. So if you guys would like to subscribe, consider doing so. Um, obviously, after you watch your video, not now, it would be uh, unwise. If you haven't, if you're new to this channel, consider watching the video. Check out the channel. Consider subscribing afterwards. If you're a returning fan, if you if you want to like the video, that'd be awesome. Otherwise, let's get into the video. So what I want to show you uh, is basically uh, how hot this July has been and uh, the forecast that we are going into so let's look at the European the thing is a couple days ago I made a video about a cool off and that cool off is still expected to happen and you can see that it's gonna be mainly dominated uh, the rest uh, of July by um, a cool weather regime across the Midwest and Great Lakes other than into this weekend I mean up until Monday July so I guess uh, most of July uh, w would be hot, and the last few days will be cool, basically. And those will be the only below-average days across the Midwest um, that have occurred this whole July. And you can see that's right there. The European is showing the cooler temperatures. Otherwise, uh, this July has been just uh, a pattern where we had just loads of heat waves. And let me actually show you how this uh, turned out. So let's go to this little presentation I made. Uh, just a quick little presentation I want to discuss. And let's take a look at this. So... First, in order to have, uh, you know, if a, because I want to ask the question, obviously, does a warm July mean a cold winter? And uh, I wouldn't be asking this question if it was a cold July. It's obviously been a warm July. You can see this is from the 1st of July through the 21st, which is as far as the data goes as of now. It's the 23rd as of recording. So they're two days behind. That's always, uh, it always takes information to process a bit. So, uh, you know, if we wanted to have a full month of July, we'd have to wait till the beginning of August. But, um, Again, it's not going to change that much. It's uh, going to remain uh, very similar. You can see it's probably good. the cool weather right here across the northwest is probably going to get diminished a bit as it's going to get very warm into late July across the west. Um, and really, there's going to be a strong heat wave over the Midwest up until the 27th and maybe a bit of a cool off. So, um, in fact, these colors may just get more brighter. You can see... Anywhere, if you have a, you know, if you had a, uh, I guess a random point to pick on a map and it was a, it could land anywhere in the United States, chances are you'd land in the yellow or the green where it is indicated above average. So some locations you can see by James Bay, Hudson Bay are just extremely above average, which, I uh, mean, is, uh, indicates, uh, and uh, insane, uh, insane heat that's been going on there for this uh, month of July. And if you recall, we've had already indications of that possibly occurring in, uh, in June. And that has hold true. So, with a warm July, um, and uh, a warm July, let's see, I wanted to show you um, what warm Julys out of all these years have, uh, so see, all these years I've chosen, 2007, 2006, 2003, all these years may seem random, trust me, they're not, uh, I, I went through uh, years on a, this composite, and I went back all the way to 18, uh, 1981, and uh, basically what I did is just looked at each July, and whether it was similar to this pattern, or this pattern or not. If it was similar to this, I included it in this forecast. And July's that were similar was 2012, 2013, 2017. And then I looked at the winters. Well, sorry, the July's that were similar was actually one year behind this. Since these years, you can see 26, 27. Um, this is the winter that followed those July's. So it's, uh, you know, the new year, it's a year ahead. But, um, uh, so I used the July of 2011, 2012, 2016, 2017, 2010, 26, 25, 22. Um, 2000 or 1999, 1988, and 1983. So just a year minus of this, and you can see this is the winter that resulted. Yeah, I know it's not really uh, what the weather and snow lovers wanted. You can see that basically what it indicated was a warm winter. So based on the research that I've gotten, uh, if if you were to just have a randomly warm July without knowing any more information about the uh, the year and anything about the Enzo or the teleconnections or any uh, long range forecasting, you know, just Nothing besides the fact that July was warm. And you were wondering whether or not does that mean a winter is going to be cold. Chances are that winter will result in a warmer winter. As you can see, all these years here had very warm Julys, 
but this is the winter that resulted. December through February, it was much above average. Maybe it wasn't horribly above average, but it covered such a vast area that it basically was similar to the winter we had this past year. Now, um, in terms of precipitation, you could see it was below across the East Coast, the West Coast, few areas where it was above across the uh, really just state of Washington and portions of Oregon, and then across uh, portions of Mississippi, Tennessee, uh, is uh, Arkansas, kind of just a little patch. Also, very boring and something that we really don't like to see as uh, weather uh, for snow lovers because, you know, I honestly, when I was making this, I was hoping that hopefully a warm July means a cold winter. And of course, just because I, uh, just because it wasn't a cold July, it wasn't, uh, in, wasn't a, uh, I guess, convincing enough for me not to make a video. I make videos about anything, whether the evidence is something I like or not. And you can see, just because it's a warm July, unfortunately, the answer to the video's title is a warm July does not indicate a cold winter. Now, let me tell you, a warm July most definitely can be followed by a cold winter, but just by itself, a warm July does not indicate a cold winter. And that's just, uh, if you and if you were to search that up, you may get a couple of websites that say, oh, research shows warm summers show uh, more uh, correlation with uh, cold winters. That's just not true. Uh, NOAA, National Weather Service, did their own little research on, into this, and they have found similar results as to mine. Um, it was really indifferent. It was random. And in this case, I found out that, I found, based on my research, that it turned out to be more warmer. But again, this is my research. It's not certified. It's just what I found. And uh, you look for yourself as it's very interesting information. However, I want to include one more thing into this video. If you recall, uh, we are going into a, uh, we're going from a neutral Enzo into a La Nina. So I factored that in and I looked at warm Julys that had a neutral pattern going into a Enzo uh, or going, uh, going uh, from a neutral into a La Nina. And I looked at those Julys and let me tell you, it was a bit different. Um, well, for, uh, so this slide, by the way, is just a random slide I put in. It was just of March of all those years. I don't know why. I could I was at first gonna include December, January, February, you know, month by month into these, uh, into these winters. But, honestly, they were all pretty warm. They were all pretty stagnant. Uh, really, they were no, no, like, you know, one cold month and the rest were warm. It was just pretty mild, all three of them. And then I just showed you March because I think that was, like, the warmest one, um, and the coldest one to the north. And you can see, uh, again, this is what most likely, uh, would happen, um, I guess, if you were to gamble and say, uh, let's see if a warm July results in a warm, a cold winter. And you could see it's not really true. Um, so uh, I looked at, uh, again, la uh, neutrals that went into La Nina. And I also looked at the years that had a warm July. So you could see that the I factor, I took away a lot of years. There was starting out one, two, three, four, five, the things in the way, I apologize. It's a little bit annoying. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I think 11 years that I had here, and now I have uh, seven years. So it diminished it quite a bit. And you could see that this is uh, from December to March. And the uh, Julys that followed, or that preceded that December, were warm. And the Enzo in the ocean was a similar pattern to what we have this year. So, um, if you're depressed by that information, which I don't know why you should be, uh, just because, uh, you know, I got warm, uh, I guess, uh, a warm outcome for out of a warm July, doesn't mean that this winter necessarily will be a warm a July, or warm winter. Because, like I mentioned earlier, just because it's a warm July, does not mean that the winter will not be cold. It could still be a cold winter. I mean, it could be a record-breaking cold winter, but it could also be a record-breaking uh, hot winter. There's no real correlation between this, except when you go a little bit further. You see, I uh, I guess I, you know, I put in the factor of a La Nina in here, and you could see that warm Julys during a neutral transition into La Nina transitioned into a cooler period across the northern U.S. Uh, during the December to March time frame. And you can see that it's pretty confident across portions of the northwest. It's not just lightly blue, it's, it's purple. Now, the southern U.S. remains warm. And, uh, you know, that's a typical La Nina pattern. Colder to the northwest, warmer towards the south. And, uh, you know, if you get a warm, La Ni uh, warm July during a La Nina pattern, chances are uh, higher that you'll get a cold winter. Now, this isn't the end-all be-all. This is the forecast for 2020-2021. Thanks for watching. It's not. Um, this is just a little piece of evidence that goes into the forecast and what we could look at and say, okay, so this is interesting. Uh, it's pointing towards a, a potentially cooler winter with higher chances since it's been a warm July and it's a certain Enzo that has been uh, occurring in these years as well. You can see these historical years have had the same pattern we have this year and have resulted in this winter and this uh, winter setup. 
so you see what I'm trying to say here. Um, a warm July by itself does not indicate a cold winter, but as you start uh, putting in more factors, more variables, um, it looks as if this winter uh, still has a chance of being cold, especially what we're seeing. But again, this is not any overwhelming evidence. This is just something fun I decided to make for the fun of it. Uh, and if you were to look at the precipitation of the winter months uh, of the, of these years, you could see that it was way more fun, if you will, than the earlier one that I showed you. The earlier one I showed you was more dry um, across the south and in the north, really. Um, it was more normal during the, for the north. But you could see this one is cold across the north and wet across the north. So that means you could see more snow, possibly. Um, and you could see across the south, it's drier and, and dr uh, drier and warmer. So that's definitely not good news for snow lovers or any winter enthusiasts. But um, that's, you know, that's typical if we were to see a La Nina this holds pretty well true drier across the south wetter across the the Ohio Valley into the Great Lakes and wetter across the Northwest especially the Pacific Northwest so um, you know this is just basically what we uh, have to deal with at this point and I thought I'll just make this a little quick, fun video for you guys so thank you so much for watching consider liking the video consider subscribing to this channel I'll catch you all guys in the next episode see ya bye